Back in the days of the grandfathers. Number one. It was my grandmother who used to always say, might as well can't dance. You see, my grandma was the one who brought Jesus into our family. <laughs> um, back in the days of the grandfathers, the first Indian, or the first non-Indian people that came, that had contact with Indian people, the Jibway speakers, just General Anishinaabe, were the uh, Jesuit priests, whatever that is. Catholic priests or um, Protestant missionaries. And they were the first guys to learn the language, to write the uh, dictionaries, to l actually learn and document uh, what Indian people were like on first contact. <laughs> it sounds like aliens. Yeah, <laughs> back in first contact with the aliens from, the, from England or France or Italy or wherever they were from. And uh, when they, they, they brought with them, they brought with them, you know, silver, not silver, but steel. They gave us steel knives, and guns, and we already had tobacco and coffee, I think. Dances with Wolves makes it look like the white people introduced us to coffee. But I think we already had coffee. I thought we drank tea. Yeah, we probably did both. The French. Yeah, it was probably the French brought us the French roast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so back in the days of the grandfathers, uh, pre-European contact, the story goes is we didn't know about Jesus. But we knew about God. We called him Gitche Manado, the Great Spirit. And we prayed and we followed the laws of the Creator. We didn't have a book called the Gagikwe Minawana Goes. No, what is it called? Gagikwe Mazini Gun. Gagikwe Mazini Gun is called the Bible, yeah, the preach book. <laughs> um, but so it was like the, when we first met non Indian people, not the English speakers and the French speakers, they brought with them the Bible and they started to teach about Jesus. And they told us a story of a time back in the ancestor days when Gitche Manadu, uh, sent his son. He, 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 he made a, a human woman named Mary pregnant. We don't know how. <laughs> That's none of my business. But Mary gets pregnant, has Gichimanadu's son in a manger. Some wise men come and give him gold for some reason. Here you go. Oh, what would be a good baby gift? I know. How about some frankincense and myrrh? <laughs> and the third wise man was like, I'm going to give him some cash. These, these, this couple looks broke. They couldn't even, you know, have their, they couldn't even afford to go to the hospital. They had to have a baby in a manger. But, so then Jesus grows up and he's got some half brothers and sisters there. He's got a little brother named James. And you know how like brothers and are, are you know, Little brothers are always following their big brother's example. There's sometimes some, some sibling rivalry there. And it was hard on James. Everybody forgets poor little, little brother to Jesus. You know, Jesus was just good at everything. You know, he's better in sports. He could walk on water. James could hardly swim. <laughs> you know, everybody would always compare him to Jesus. Why can't you be more like your brother Jesus? You know, it was tough. In fact, this isn't in the Bible, but you know that, that in the Bible, they say the first time Jesus ever did a, a, a miracle is when he turned water into wine. The family gets invited to a wedding. And they go, go to this wedding, you know, it's Mary and Jesus and James and 
you know, some cousins and whatever, every, you know. And in those days, weddings were even a bigger deal than they are now. People would party for days. It would be a big feast and, you know, whole family. You know, it was very, very important that you go to the wedding. So they go to the wedding and everything's great. And, uh, but what happens? You know, 9, 10 o'clock rolls around. They drunk up all the wine. And like, oh, crap. This party was just getting started. We're all out of wine. So Mary, she, she brings, pulls Jesus aside. And she goes, listen, my boy, this party is going to dry up if we don't have any wine. You think you can, uh, you know, do your little thing? And Jesus like, oh, come on, mom. I don't think it's time yet. Just come on, do this for me, my boy. Honor your mother and father, you know. <laughs> and so Jesus is like, all right. And he prays and poof, water into wine. And the dad grabs a glass of wine and he drinks it down. He's like, oh, wow, this is really good wine. Man, you know, usually, this is actually in the Bible. He goes, usually people, they put out the good wine at first and save the crap for after everybody's drunk. We're all drunk and this is uh, the best wine I've ever tasted in my whole life. And I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> no, <laughs> you didn't say that, but, and I always thought that was cool. They're like, of course, when Jesus makes some wine, it's going to be just, <laughs> you know, just the finest wine. But so then, you know, the party on and whatever. Next weekend, same thing. New, new, uh, new couples getting married. The, uh, Joseph and Mary family get invited, but this time Jesus is gone now. He had to leave. But James is there. And, you know, the wedding happens. They have the feast, the dancing and all this stuff. And they drink up the wine. And same thing happens. They run out of wine. And the guys are like, hey, James. Yeah? We're out of wine. And what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> You know, last weekend, your, uh, your brother Jesus, he really kind of saved the party. So, yeah, I know. I'm not him, okay? I can't do that stuff. I'm just, I'm just James. <laughs> oh, poor James. Yeah. So people always had, you know, James disappointed a lot of people by not being more like his, his brother Jesus. So then, kids... Jesus goes off, and now, now it's when the Bible gets interesting. And it's, it's amazing to me how little the church, church has ever talked about the cool stories when I was growing up. You know, the old Genesis is cool. There's lots of stories of giants and battles and floods and crazy stuff that goes on. Churches never want to talk about that. And then Jesus, they love talking about when Jesus gets crucified. But there's cool stuff before that where Jesus is, it's like the exorcist. <laughs> he's casting out demons. He's healing people. He's starting to get a following. People are starting to treat him like a rock star. He gets up there. If Jesus was, I mean, he's alive in heaven now, but if Jesus was here today he'd have a podcast <laughs> you know he would just start talking and crowds would would gather and he'd tell them you know hey you guys be good and guess what god's real he's my father and you know you straighten up good news preparing a place for you you know he was all about good news but these silly Christian churches, all they can talk about is, you know, he died for your sins. Like, you mean he died? What? What do you mean by that? He died for your sins. So if you believe in this story, you will go to heaven. If you do not believe in the story we're telling you, you will go to hell. You're like, what? How does this work? But, you know, you hear this when you're a little kid and you're afraid to question it, you know. But I finally understood, you know, in America, we don't use the word for like they do in England and stuff. What do you mean? Well, in England, they'll say, 
Um, like, what was that Bowie song? Only for you, I don't regret that I was Thursday's child. Oh, yeah. Only for you. For can also mean because of you. So Jesus died because of the sins of the world. Now, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying I don't have, uh, you know, I haven't inherited the original sin of jealousy and an ego and stuff. But Jesus was crucified because of the sins of the people who crucified him. Not because of the descendants 2,000 years later did anything. Don't go away. I'm begging you to stay. Because I'm going to miss your love. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't go. Oh, really? Why? Because I'm going to miss your love. <laughs> the minute you, you walk, walk out, out that, that door. door. But I got to go to work, honey. No, I'm <laughs> going to miss your love the minute you walk out that door. <laughs> hey, everybody. Okay. Hey. Won't you consider becoming a patron? Patron? No, that's not right. Um, patron. Yeah. I can't even say it. <laughs> Please become a patron saint and support Buju Nana Buju, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. Click the links in the description to our Patreon page. And if you become a $25 a month Buju crew member, it's an exclusive club. <laughs> it's going to cost you some junior some <laughs> no. money. <laughs> no. uh, you'll get a, a cup, a coffee cup. Oh, you can oh. put your black medicine water in there. <laughs> Muckade bush kiki wabu. Muckade bush kiki. See, you're already learning it, Jibway. <laughs> but anyway, so he goes around healing people, telling people to love each other, share to, you know, walk the good road to, uh, you know, love God and quit your lying and don't, don't go blowing your money at the casinos, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, and, uh, they didn't like him for that. And so they crucified him. They hung him up on a cross. And they stabbed him and stuff. And I came to realize this year that I think the most horrible pain of all that was that the big sin we all have is selfishness, is uh, jealousy, whatever. I think, you know, people... People talk like when Jesus was crucified, everybody hated him and we're shouting at him. How dare you tell me you love me, you know, but I don't think it was that at all. I think the people were like they are today where he happened to get crucified, but most people didn't even pay attention. They're like, oh, what happened? Oh, did Mary's boy get, yeah, well, he shouldn't have run his mouth. And they went back to their lives unaffected. Now, all these years later, this whole merry band of, you know, men in tights or men in robes, the 12 disciples, you know, they get, they get treated like they're gods too. But each one of them kind of betrayed Jesus. They didn't try to protect him at all. They never understood what he was really about. They didn't really believe he was God's son. You know. But there you go. So Indian people. So those, there you go, kids. Just because I know even if your grandma is dragging you to church, you probably never were told a straight answer of who Jesus was and what it's all about. Jesus said, there's a heaven when you die. If you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, I think he said you go to hell. Yeah, he, you know. he's God's son. 
And he walked around earth many years ago and told us all about heaven and stuff like that. When I had my vision, I became aware of a bunch of stuff. But the one thing I'm not really sure of, like I was sitting next to what I always say I thought was God. And I couldn't see his face. But I kind of knew that he was the most handsome man you could imagine. But you could imagine it. Super buff and we were giants. And he kind of looked like this, only about 20 years older. He looked like he was a like 45-year-old, 50-year-old guy who was also like a superhero body. Like ridiculously, I mean, you, could, you couldn't tell. He just kind of knew, like, glowed, golden. But now when I think about my vision, I'm not so sure. It might have been Jesus. You know, this is just a, the guy, you know, the guy who painted this didn't really know. Because it looked like this, only what you might picture this guy's dad looking like. Like super handsome dad. Um, and I was also made aware of just how great, like everything is on a scale of greatness to not great. And God's at the top of everything. But you can picture him, you know. If you can take the most beautiful thing, multiply it by five, there you go. Know, the funniest person in the world by five. He's super irreverent. I figured that out in the few seconds I, I, I was with him. Because God is the greatest thing ever. You can't even compare. Everything is a version of him, but a lesser version. But the problem is when you're the greatest and you're the creator of everything, nothing impresses you. Nothing makes you go, whoa, I really respect this little gnat. <laughs> you know, it's like I mentioned in that other video. Remember that scene in the, what you call it? The, uh, not the X-Men. The Watchmen? Yeah, the Watchmen. That blue godlike Dr. Manhattan or whatever. Yeah. He goes, the world's smartest man is no more of a threat to me than, than it's smartest termite that's what god's like but he loves the termites he loves like jesus was his only son but everybody else is like a daughter to him even the guys <laughs> you know there's one son but then he made the rest of us or the other children and you know this is his boy this is the guy. This is the king's son, right? Um, but I got the sense that he loves his all the other children just as much. And it's kind of like having a daughter who uh, is making all the wrong decisions in life. Yeah. And you just wish she wouldn't behave that way. And it breaks your heart to see her carrying on, you know. And she'll march her way right into the pits of hell and he doesn't want that for anybody but uh you know that's how he feels about it so it's not like i was told where god's up there judging and kind of annoyed with all of us like, oh he's doing it again look at him he's smoking a cigarette <laughs> you know <laughs> it's not like that <laughs> so um, but the Indian Christian connection. So a lot of people, when I was in college, they were like, oh, that dirty, those dirty missionaries and the dirty boarding schools that brainwashed us, our proud Indian ancestors into becoming Christians. Cause that's what happened too, by the way, the amount of people who didn't convert to Christianity was a small minority of Indian people. And you can tell today, you know, I mean, for people over 60, way more of them are Christian than not. People, Gen Xers and younger are all 
well, a bunch of heathens, but you know. <laughs> um, so it's been my feeling recently that what happened? Indian people heard about Jesus. And it made sense. They believed it. It wasn't about brainwashing. It wasn't about evil nuns coercing. You know, we're not that dumb. That's the, the story of, you know, forcibly converting Native Americans into Christianity is pretty insulting to Indians, you know. So I feel like it was kind of one of these things, if they're... One thing about Ojibwe culture, you know, and all Indian culture, is that we integrated new stuff immediately. Nobody was concerned with, hey, let's let's stay true and pure to our, you know, original culture. No, as soon as new technologies came, you ever notice how, like, Indians stopped wearing moccasins as soon as the cowboy boot got introduced, because it was a better shoe. We didn't stick with bows and arrows when we got rifles, you know? <laughs> yeah. And when all this organized religious teachings or whatever was talking about the afterlife, God, and sure, the story of Jesus, what's wrong, you know, that doesn't threaten anything about Indian people that this happened. Um, I think the... Uh, Indian people saw the truth of it, and that, that that's all it was. You know, they made a big deal in the 70s when they, when they, they passed the, uh, the Indian Religious Freedom Act. And they said, oh, here's a new law. From now on, Indians, you are free to perform sweat lodge ceremonies. And I remember when I went to my first sweat lodge, I was like, oh, this is cool. These guys have never stopped doing this ceremony in hundreds of years. Then they're like, no, we, we, we just started doing this in the 80s. I was like, what? It's like, this is America. Nobody was keeping Indian people from doing sweat lodges and stuff. Just, there weren't that many people who were interested in it. They were going to church. I don't know. But again, they, oh, here's a law where Big Daddy government gives us a, the right to do something. Oh, thank you for making it legal for me to smoke marijuana. I guess I'll try it for the first time now. I, I never asked for your permission. I don't, I'm, I'm not like happy about what's going on in Red Lake. About the dispensary? Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not unhappy. I don't care. But anyway. And this has been the story of Jesus, <laughs> to the best of my recollection. To learn more about the Son of God, I don't know, I would tell you to go to church, but I don't know what they're tell teaching the kids these days. Check one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Emily Aubrey on guitar. Welcome to Boozhoo, Nana Boozhoo, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I'm happy to be here with you today to speak Ojibwe and learn about the language and culture. Welcome to Buju Nana Buju, a podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. My name is Michael Lyons, on guitar, Emily Aubrey, the lovely and talented Natasha. Now please welcome Nana Buju. Take it away, buddy. <laughs> All right.